Hey everyone, it's your girl Pebbles. How are you? I hope you're having a good start to your day. So look, I want to tell you four things about Ghana I didn't like. I know. So if you saw my last video, you know that I absolutely love Ghana like so much that I want to move there, right? We're on that plane. But if we're going to be honest and be authentic and be transparent, we have to also speak about the things that we didn't particularly care for, we don't care for, just in life in general. Like, um, to everything there's a balance and life is a balance, right? It's the balance of life. It's the yin and the yang. And so if I'm going to tell you all the great things about Ghana because it's more great things than not, I have to share with you my experience about some of the things that weren't so great. However, the beautiful thing is those things can, they can be changed and worked on. They can be fixed. So it's not like a permanent thing where they can't work on. But before we go into the video, please like subscribe and hit the notification button because if you like my videos and I have to say thank you so much and me Dasi because many of you are really liking the videos you have to do all those things in order to keep up when I start uploading new, new videos and more new videos all right so look it's only four things about Ghana that I didn't care for but again they can be fixed so the first thing like the biggest thing for me was when we were going to um, the slave castles, which are located in Cape Coast, we had to drive through Cape Coast. And um, in Cape Coast, they have a lot of police checkpoints. And we were getting pulled over like every other street or every other I would say block that's how often we were getting poured, poured over and you know at first it's like it's frightening because you know being here living in the U.S. of A you know when you get pulled over by a cop and you got this melanin you know, this melanin popping you know it's, it's stressful you got PTS right PTS syndrome right uh, PTSD and so when we got pulled over you automatically go into the norm what you're normally used to and how you're used to feeling um when you're pulled over by a cop, but I have to tell you that it's completely different. Like, you're not sitting there thinking that you're gonna lose your life. It's completely different, like, transaction, right? However, in a butt, the bribes that they have going on there, it's ridiculous. And so basically, they're pulling you over to see what they can, any type of infractions they can figure out or just throw something out there. They just spitballing, as my little cousin says, says, and trying to find something they can get you on. Now, mind you, they're not writing you no warning. They're not writing you no tickets most of the time. What they want is some money. They want some CDs. And so they'll pull you over to the side, make you sit there, and then go through all this miscellaneous stuff for no reason, wasting your time. Time is very valuable. It's annoying. Um, just for them to eventually say, you know, you got to give me this much money in order for you to go. And so we we were getting pulled over so much that we couldn't even make it to the second slave castle because it took away so much time going and coming back. Um, and it was literally like every two blocks, I promise you. And Cape Coast, from what I saw, and correct me if you're from Ghana and you're wrong, it was more so country land, village land. So they were able to really get away with a lot of this on a, on a daily. Um, apparently they had something big going on um, some time ago where a lot of cops were caught on camera taking bribes from people. So a lot of people lost their jobs, like it's a big thing. So they don't want to be on camera. And it's said that they, the cops they take so many bribes from people on a daily basis that they don't even have to spend the money they make working because they can live off the bribes that they take from people. And that annoyed my soul so much. If you know me, you know that I'm the type of person I don't put up for crap. Like complicity or to be silent is to be complicit. And I don't I don't believe in that. And it's like at some point somebody gotta do something, somebody gotta at least speak up. And I just got sick of it. Like between going and then going to the slave castle, check that video out if you didn't check it out. And going through the spiritual journey that I went through and seeing and hearing and hearing and feeling and just, it's, it's a lot. It was thick, right? And then turning back around to go back home or go back where we were staying and keep getting pulled over. I was like, enough is enough. And my stepchild, I call her the stepchild Jasmine, she was like, oh Lord. I recall hearing like how they don't like being on camera because they can lose their job. And so what I did was, I said the next time if we can pull it over again, I know we will, I am going to pull my phone out. 
sure enough, a few minutes later, we got pulled over. I kind of took my phone out and I hit the stop button and I put it up to the window and I saw the recording now. And I also pulled my mask, mask down a little bit so they can see, even though you can't tell, you can't tell, that, you know, I was American or not from there. Because I wanted them to feel like, all right, let us stop doing this. And sure enough, it worked. <laughs> he was like, go, go. And then we got to the next stop, two, three blocks later. Had my phone out. They pulled us over. The guy noticed that he walked away. And the other cop came over. He was like, y'all can go, y'all can go. And so everybody in the car, <coughs> excuse me, in the car, they were cracking up. They was like, did you have your phone out? I was like, yes. Enough is enough. You can't be out here taking people money like that. I said, by the time we get through all these checkpoints, we're going to be broke. Our money is going to be gone. What's going to happen when our money is gone and we get to the next checkpoint and we don't have no money? I said, then it's getting dark. I don't want to be out in this country lane, village lane, dark, and they asking for money. So enough is enough. Like, I hate it. <laughs> I said, I know. Give me a ticket. <laughs> Give me a warning or lock me up and now I'm in contact with the U.S. Embassy. So the government of Ghana, I love Ghana. <clears throat> I am working hard to help and in my small way build the, build the bridge between the, the black Americans here so they can come over to Ghana and see the what, what you have going on, which is wonderful. And I've been able to do that on my little small scale. I literally have everybody wanting to come visit Ghana. So please, 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 please fix that issue with the bribery because it's for the birds and the birds don't even want it, okay? Because quite frankly, they can't afford it. I saw one older lady, she was giving the cops the business. She's like, you're not getting no more of my money. And she was from there. She's like, no, enough is enough. And I think she stressed them out so bad. They was like, just go. Put all your stuff in the car. She started pulling stuff out the car. Go. And so that's how I felt. Like, silence. To be silent is to be complicit. People never be complicit. When you see something's wrong, speak up. Do something. Even if it's in a small, minute way. Speak up. And so that's number one. The bribes from the cops. Taking Hardworking people money. I mean, they was pulling over Trotro. Trotro is their, um, it's like their bus, right? And Trotro, everybody knew, knew the routine. One of the guys would hop out of Trotro, hand them some money, and they do a real slick. Like, they do a real slick, right? Because they know they wrong. And hop back on and go. Those people, Trotro -tro drivers and attendants, they work hard for their money. They work hard. Who are you to take their money? So that's number one. I really don't like that with the bride. Number two would be the trash. Oh, so look, I am not one of those people that feel like, okay, I'm an American, I'm better. When I come over to your country, I want things and look everything, you know, look the same, look how it looks in America. No, I, I'm, I don't believe in that. I never want people to think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go somewhere else or come to your country and have this idea that, you know, I'm coming to your country and things need to be how it is, you know, for my country. If that's the case, I could have stayed home. So if you're like that, stay home because it's for the birds and the birds don't want it. If you're going to another country to visit, then you're going to visit their ways, their way of being and living. So don't come over with this cocky, cavalier attitude thinking that you want to come over there with your ideas and change things because they don't want it. Well, stay home for all that. And so the trash, like, you know, a lot of times they just... The people there just throw trash anyway. They open stuff up, they cut stuff, the fruit, whatever. And they just throwing trash on the side of the road. So a lot of the neighborhoods you're driving through and walking through and you're, you're at, you see trash everywhere. And I just wish that they can have a, and I know they will soon, a better trash system where they can really come pick up the trash on a daily because Ghana is so beautiful and we don't want it to be overtaken by the trash, right? And so I wasn't like so annoyed by it but it was like all right let's figure this out but again i'm optimistic and i know that ghana is still developing and all these things are going to come soon in the next decade or so ghana's going to be popping okay ghana's going to be popping so i just want to say the trash was annoying but i know they're going to work on it right and let's not just throw trash in and everywhere okay the third thing the third third thing would be the roads you have some roads that are paved, and you have some that's not. They're like clay roads, dirt roads. Now, I will say this, could just be me. <laughs> when we took Uber one of the days, we went out in the village land. We were everywhere, Jazz and I. We had the windows down. The clay was all in our face. I wear glasses. Right now, I'm trying to keep right. My glasses were getting dirty. But my skin was popping from the clay. I don't know what it was. Um, and you know, we was... <coughs> 
because we was getting on our things, you know, no. <laughs> so it was a little annoying. And it was like, you know, sometimes you're in a car and you're carring it like this, and you, you know, because the roads is just like, it's craziness. It's mayhem. It's mayhem. It's a beautiful struggle. So, again, I know Ghana is developing and they are going to eventually get the roads done. I know they're working on it, but I just have to mention it for those who haven't been yet and plan on going. You know, look out for the bribe, look out for the trash, and don't be shocked by the roads because some of them are a little raggedy. But here in America, I live in Maryland, we have a lot of raggedy roads. So I'm not judging. I'm just saying this is what you should, should expect because after good snow, we be having mad potholes, okay? So I'm not judging. I'm just saying I got to give you the balance of life. What I loved about Ghana versus what I didn't love so much, all right? So the roads, it will mess your car up with the quickness, okay? <laughs> it gets expensive, all right? And so the fourth thing would be the gutters. So like here, what we're used to, the gutters are covered up, but they're covered. You can't fall in, you can't jump in, you know, things go in the gutter, you can't get to it. The people that manage the gutters take care of that. In Ghana, the gutters are like, and I could be over exaggerating because that's what I do sometimes, like a foot wide. And so you have like the curb and the gutter and then the street. And so sometimes you have to jump over the gutter in order to get onto the curb or a safe spot. And so that's dangerous. Not only that, a lot of the trash fall into the gutters and so it just look, you know, real messy. And then in some places we went to, it was really smelly. Um, so the government of Ghana, again, I know you're working on it. I know you're developing. I know you need people to come over to invest in infrastructure and roads and all that. We won't get there. You notice how I say we? Because you're not going to tell me I'm not Ghanaian, okay? Um, but the gutters. So this video was more so about me sharing this information with those who haven't been yet who want to go. I don't want you to be shocked and get deterred by these four minute small things that can be fixed um, and not want to be in such a beautiful place because sometimes we get caught up by the visual things, right? We get caught up by things that are not attractive because that's how we've been conditioned and trained. So don't let those minute miscellaneous things deter you from the bigger picture, the bigger goal, the calling, if you're being called back home, whether it's Ghana or anywhere um, on the continent of Africa, don't let these small things change your mind <clears throat> because perception is reality. And so your perception of what you see might be nasty, dirty, and dingy, but really behind that, it's a beautiful struggle and things will get there. So this is a quick video. Four things I didn't like about Ghana. The bribes from the cop, cops, the trash, the gutters, and the roads. But that's it. Everything else was amazing. Absolutely amazing. I can't wait back. I can't wait to get back in the fall. So listen, like, subscribe, turn the notification bell. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the wonderful comments and the likes and um, subscriptions here now lately from the last three Ghana videos. I'm going to do more because my goal, my part, my passion is to um, be the bridge to close up that gap from the black folk in America so we can get over to the motherland. And also, I'm going to be doing videos of meditation, manifestation, saging, pouring libations, all that good stuff. So let me know if you have any ideas you want me to share with you. And I'm going to be sharing more about who I am and what I do and what I believe in. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm done. Ooh, talking so much. Now I'm going to stay and have a nice day. I say bye.